wants, but I had always had fire in the belly to be number one. Mm -hmm. But then at 12, I had an epiphany, um, which really set the stage for the rest of my life. And I was dreaming about my sport, and uh, not dreaming, but daydreaming. Mm -hmm. And I realized everybody wore white shoes, white socks, white clothes, played with white balls. And I asked, my question, I asked this question at 12, I said, where is everybody else? And that started, uh, I decided that day I'd fight for equal rights and opportunities for the rest of my life in my sport. Right. But also I started to think way beyond my sport. I'm, I'm the kid in fourth grade when we had recess in the classroom. We'd go down and bring, you know, put the map down. Of course now you'd look at your iPad or something. But just bring down the, the map and go, I want to go to these places someday. I want to go to England. I want to go to that. And so when I started tennis, I realized it was global. And I love history. So I read the, the history of tennis, all three books they had in the library. Mm -hmm. Uh, immediately and memorized all the champions and singles, doubles, and mixed from Wimbledon, USO, everything I could get my hands on. Mm -hmm. um, it was, most of the books were mostly about the male players, not about the females, but I didn't care. I was just like tennis you crazy. I was totally, and then I started dreaming about winning Wimbledon someday because that's really um, what you had to do to, in, in my early days, in my early career. It, you had to win Wimbledon to be number one in the world. So it was very simple. And I used to dream about it. And I slept with my racket. I slept with tennis books. And I slept with my tennis sweater next to me. I usually get too hot, but I put it on and then I get too hot. Right. No, no, I'm totally, I was just totally immersed in it. So I don't think I'm uh, the normal right. uh, kid because even going to school after I had this, this dream of mine to be number one in the world, the other kids at school think I was crazy. Mm -hmm. Like, what are you talking about? They didn't even care. Also, tennis was nothing in those days. It was right. amateur, and nobody cared, and it wasn't high profile, you know, like the team sports. And, yeah. and, but I knew that it was global, and I knew that baseball wasn't. That's true. I knew that football wasn't. Of course, I'm a girl, so I couldn't play. I realized at nine years old, when I was at Wrigley Field in Los Angeles, when we had a triple A. See, the Dodgers hadn't come to LA yet, okay. and, and the Giants hadn't come to San Francisco yet. Okay. I'm just pre, just as a child, and then they came during my childhood okay. out there. So this was a I went to I went to Pacific Coast League at Wrigley Field, which quite looked ex looks exactly like the Wrigley Field in Chicago, mm -hmm. brick by brick. Oh wow! And I realized that day when I was nine years old that I'd never be able to play baseball because only boys played, mm -hmm. and I was totally crushed that day. Yeah. Coming home in the car, I was very quiet. My mom and dad said, "What are you so quiet about?" I said, "No, nothing." But I was like, I just realized today that girls can't play aren't allowed to play baseball. Hmm. And it really so crushed me.